Have you ever thought your people skills are much more important even than your technical knowledge? Especially today. And now I will explain you why. If you like the video, give us thumb up. If you are new in the channel, remember about subscribing our channel with the red button down there and visit our social media so you will always be fresh with news. Let's start. Imagine you are a very experienced developer. Oh, maybe you are, so you don't need to imagine. But still, let's stay with the developer. Your client, product owner or business is giving you a requirement for the new project. It's a bit complicated and big, but you immediately know how to split it for the smallest functions, what services to use, actually which services should be like serverless, which should be like normal or regular servers. You immediately know when Angular or React will be better and uh, what to do to get the best performance. Actually, it's great if you know that, but still, let's imagine if your colleague maybe junior colleague or somebody who is not very experienced with coding is asking you about something and your the best response is don't disturb me, I need to code, we have deadline. Actually, it's great, you have great knowledge, but still, if you have no technical skills, it will not work for a long-term relationship. Even if you can build everything in a second, maybe your knowledge sometimes can rescue the project. Sometimes you can really save the company for that, but you will not build like a really good long-term relationship with the team. It will just not work. And even if you will change the team or change the company or maybe change the country, or I don't know, maybe if you will go from IT somewhere else, without people skills you will not survive or if you will be still hired to the companies because you have knowledge it will be really difficult for another people to work with you and in a really long term way it will be really difficult for your mental health to to coexistence with the people it's why you really need to care about the people skills and today we will talk about what are really people skills, which one skills you can train and how. Let's go to the next section. What are the people skills I would like to show you on the few examples. Imagine we are getting requirements from the people, from the business, and they would like to build project. They would like to actually tell us something, give us a like, project to build. So what we do? We talk with them to, to get their requirements, to know what they need with us. Next, if the requirements are not clear for us, for rest of developers, for somebody in the team, what we do? We ask questions, we clarify, and we talk with them to have everything clear. Next, if we would like to prepare tasks for the developers or we would like to prepare tasks for us even, or manager would like to prepare tasks for us, what he has to do? He has to talk with us and prepare tasks. So we need to do a brainstorming with team of developers, explain them what is to build, how they see the possibility and what tasks they feel good to build. Next. If one of our colleagues, less experienced, needs any help with task, he is stuck. So what we do? We are coming to his desk and asking what the problem is. We are do some pair programming or we help him explaining how the task should be built. Actually, we still talk with them and we interact with people. Next, if our colleague prepared his task Maybe he is less experienced than us, but he actually finished the, ta finished the task. He is very proud of his work, but we see the work is 
maybe not the best quality, maybe we could fix the work somehow, we, we know how to do it better, or even maybe sometimes the solution could be dangerous for the project. What do we do? Do we come to his desk, start shouting on him, telling him he is a bad developer and he should throw his computer through the window? Of course, no! We are coming to him and trying to talk with him, maybe suggesting a better solution, or sometimes we need to explain him how he can fix it to avoid the problems. And all of that are the people's skills. Without that, it's not possible to, to do all of these things without making conflicts or arguing with people or doing like bad atmosphere. So we need people's skills to have the good relationship in the team and good mood. About good people skills examples, now I will tell what I mean and next we will go through each of them, we will talk why they are important. So definitely communication is one of the most important skill if you would like to interact with people, but actually communication is not only your mouth, because you communicate with your body, you communicate with your tone and actually with facial expressions. It's not really important what you say, it's only like 7%, but how you say and the most important is how you are received by people you talked with. Let's go with the few skills that I would like to show you and explain why they are important, maybe show some situations when they are important. Patience is one of the most important skill. Actually, if you are a developer, definitely is very important because in many cases you need to use that. For example, imagine you need to explain things to somebody who is total not technical. He doesn't understand how coding works, he is from business sometimes and he doesn't need to understand. Maybe he knows like the most popular technology, but that's it. In many situations you will need to explain why you would like to refactor the application that you built last month with Angular 9 to Angular 10 and why it's crucial for life or whole the world, why it's super important and why company cannot exist without paying next thousand of dollars for that. Uh, actually, it's kind of joke, like programmers always would like to go with new technology, sometimes for them it's really important, for business it's no and Sometimes we need to wait and I even know projects where we need to work with still with some services with jQuery and we cannot go with React or Angular because it's not time for that, no budget for that, we need to wait for that and especially we need to have patience when we try to talk with, uh, with some people about that. But not only, we need to have a lot of patience when something doesn't work, it's every day, I would say every hour situation in developer's life, something doesn't work, sometimes we need to debug the stuff for hours that we can fix in one line of code or sometimes we need to explain for us really simple things for somebody who is less experienced, who is just starting and something for us is super obvious, for them is no. So it's why patients can really save us very often in our everyday work. Empathy is a skill when you can put somebody's shoes, see world by his eyes. It's really important because when you understand somebody's point of view, his problems, struggles, maybe not always he can tell you about, because maybe not always he would like to, but still he can have some struggles that if you will understand, it will help you a lot. Especially it's really helpful with any brainstorming sessions, with any tasks planning, or even if you are checking pull request of your colleague or your developers, you can see maybe why they really would like to add three spaces, not four, and if you will understand that, you can see he's not the person who is doing it especially against you, but it's something that 
He does because he used to do and it's not a big problem. Sometimes if you use empathy, you can accept much easier things that you couldn't without that. Communication is something that you will use very, very often. Even if you are a guy who is working in a server room on minus three floor, still sometimes somebody can come to you and would like to talk. I would say much often that you could think and you need to talk with them. So uh, communication is something that you will use even if you are a person that prefer to speak to computers by writing code, still you will need to talk a lot with the people. Now I would like to actually tell you how you can improve your communication and what to do to avoid some like small mistakes with that. One of the most important is to not stopping people when they talk. It's not only about stopping ever people, but for example, if somebody is like introvert or he's very shy, for them it could be a bit more difficult to formulate like longer sentence, especially in group of people. So if you will stop them or don't let them finish, it's not only impolite for them, but for them it can be more difficult. Still, some people are extrovert and talk a lot, so still stopping them, it's not always the, the polite way and you shouldn't do that. Even if uh, you have any questions, very often, if you will let them finish, maybe they will answer your questions, so you will not need to ask them. Or sometimes it can happen, for example, it's a long speech in group of people and you will have few questions to them. If you are afraid to forget them, always you can do simple notes and ask them at the end of the, of the speech so it's a polite professional and still will not make your relation key. About written communication, it's kinda difficult to show all of the emotions, your body language and positive vibe. Uh, so I would say in many cases the written message, they look a bit cold, but they don't need to because if you are speaking with your teammates, actually always you can add something like emojis. They are, they are cool, some of them are really fun and you can warm the atmosphere or warm the communication. But still, if you are talking in a very, very formal way, you can add something like, I hope you are doing well or have a good day or at least best regards. Or if it's like Christmas, you can add simple Merry Christmas to people. So you don't go into very informal way, but still you are adding some text that can make your message warmer and people can feel nice. So it's worth to do that. Talking instead of writing is very important. So as we know, with writing messages, there is few obstacles to show like the positive emotions, to show to people like what we really feel and show our body language. But still, even if we are in telecommuting and not in the office, we can call via phone to somebody so we can use at least our voice tone or it's much better to do a video call instead of just simple chatting. Of course, not always, because sometimes you need to just send documentation parts so you will not call to somebody and read them that on video call. But yeah, if you would like to ask about something, it's much, much better to call, see each other, smile and, and show the, the good mood. But if we are in the office, especially if we sit like next to each other, it's much better to put your headphones off. I love the noise cancelling headphones as well, but it's for focus. And uh, if, if we would like to talk with somebody, it's much, much better to put them off and come to them, start talking and ask about something. It gives you much, much more of, of the closing relationship and still handling like this positive mood. About public speaking and actually turning communication skills, I would like to tell actually 
It's very, very worth to do that and try as much as possible so you can improve a lot of your skills and it doesn't need to be in a huge conference or in group or 300 people. You can actually try public speaking even with two, three, four or five of your teammates. Uh, you shouldn't be shy on stand-ups, you should try to talk to everybody, like maybe even it's better to talk to few people than to one of the person. And actually, even if you are shy or introvert, I would like to tell introverts very often are much better communicators because they almost always are very good listeners, they almost never like disturb people from speaking and what I, I found actually some of people would say people who talk a lot are always the best communicators and it's not always true. And many of the people who talk a lot prefer to talk to somebody who is just listening. <laughs> it works like that. Uh, so as I told, even if you're shy, you're introvert, it's still worth to try speaking to people and it works for your self-confidence. If you are trying first to three, four, five people next to you, talk to bigger parts of people, maybe doing any speaks uh, in front of the company, you are getting a lot of self-confidence and it's strongly related to your body language. So next, if you feel like, if you look much more self-confident, you are getting that in body language and your speaks are much better. So active listening skill is very important and if you could imagine a situation when you are speaking to somebody and he's looking in a bit different direction and telling only mm, yes, mm -hmm, aha, don't you feel it's like a bit annoying and you immediately know somebody is not asking, not listening to you. Actually, it's not always because they are rude. Sometimes it's about micro sleeps. Even like 15 millions of people have micro sleeps. Very often it's, uh, it's because they didn't sleep enough. Like uh, if people don't sleep like at least seven, nine hours per night, sometimes they have micro sleeps, but not all only. Sometimes it's if it's like long meeting or something that is not very interesting them. But you can fix your active listening skills and I would like to tell you how. About improving active listening skills, I can give you a few hints that I use and they always work. So actually I would say eye contact is really good and it's something like proof for the person you are talking with you are really listening then of course you shouldn't like look like crazy still looking on her be or him because it can be taken as even aggressive but i would say just soft eye contact it will help anyway with eye contact it cannot work if you still have micro sleeps because if you have micro sleeps your brain can think stop thinking about what your your person you are talking with is speaking about and you can stop listening and for the micro sleeps for me it works when i move with big finger of my foot time to time i know it sounds funny but it really works and actually, one more thing that I would like to tell, it's something like a framework of the four movements. And the first one is to ask questions. So you during the talk, you need to ask questions. The second one is to clarify. So after asking questions, you need to ask questions for clarify something. The third one is like a reflection. And a reflection is something when you take what the person said, you paraphrase it and repeat to them. And the fourth one is to use the summarization. So at the end of the talk, you summarize everything to prove you understood what was said and you know the topic of, of the conversation. Actually, I would say you could use something like mirroring as well, but you need to know how to do it to not look funny. 
Uh, mirroring is something like uh, repeating the body movement or smile or facial expressions of the person who is doing that. Actually, as I told you, you need to know how to do it and you would need to read some tutorials because if you will do everything what person does, it can look a bit creepy even, I would say. And that's all about improving active listening skills. About humility, sometimes it can happen when you are the most experienced developer in the team. Sometimes it can happen you are delivering much more tasks than your colleagues. And you never should carry, take it as you are the best and everybody around you are worse. You never should to tell your colleagues, hey, I'm much better than you, you are really bad. You need to use a bit empathy still and take care about maybe they had a bad day, maybe they had some something happened in their life that they didn't want to tell public or just sometimes it can be stuck, it happens. So still you need to care about that. It's not always like that and you need to care about Actually, if you are really good, very often it's not only your success, but very often it wouldn't be possible without the rest of your colleagues. Very often even like manager or somebody like business analyst has huge impact on your performance. What I will tell in, uh, in the next point. About teamwork, I would like to give some example because in some teams, I could do sometimes even 300% of the average performance on normal, like standard developer, but it wouldn't be possible just because my experience. It's not only about that, but it wouldn't be possible without like work of the project manager that can sort the, the work of everything. It wouldn't be possible without business analysts that can pass for me the business requirements with a really good description and I wouldn't have to spend time on clarifying things. It wouldn't be like possible without my colleagues from the team when they can like set up a repository for really clear stuff. So sometimes I could just sit and deliver stuff and it wasn't be possible without without people that can give me the, the best ideas doing, during brainstorming. It's the best proof like teamwork, it's a really important thing. And even if you think you are the best, it's not really just because you know how to develop or you have an uh, analytic skills. Very often it's related to the people that you work with. I would say, very often even designer have has a really huge impact on your work because design can be done by person who knows how to develop how to design for developers and sometimes design can be done in very artistic way when every button is totally different paddings are totally different etc in this case you will do something that should be done in one day probably for one week so always until you will tell you are the best, you do everything here in the team. Always you need to have in your mind, it's not only you, but it's work of, of everybody. Accountability is fantastic skill if you use it, you know how to use it. Because imagine a situation when everybody in your team will be breaking things, destroying things, not delivering, and everybody will look for any excuses. It will not work, all right? But if you will fail, you will do something bad, you will write bad code, you will fail with uh, time, you will not deliver. The best, what you can do is to tell it was your fault, even if sometimes you feel it's not always only your fault, it's not healthy to, to blame another people for, for 
stuff that you didn't deliver. Of course, if you have any blockers, you can put what was the blocker, but if you didn't deliver because, I don't know, you are waiting for pull request from your colleague, it's not good to, to blame on, on, on other people. So if you have any fail, the best what you can do is to tell in public it's your fault, you are responsible for that, you are taking the responsibility and fix this or improve. The best what you can do is to improve, to not fail in the future and to find the, the point, what was the reason of your fault and about that I will tell in the next section, that is... Self-awareness, it's something when you really know not only what you are good with, of course this is really important to be like self-confident, otherwise uh, it will be difficult to live, but it's really important if you know about your weak points. Maybe not obsessively looking for them and telling to everybody you are weak and bad because it's not the best way to sell yourself, but to know in your head what you have to fix, what you have to improve, and time to time look for the points that uh, you should improve, that you should work for, or, or I would say like, for example, time to time do a calculation if these improvements work, if you fix them and look for no, for new ones. That is really important because without that you will not improve your skills. It's not only about people skills or only about development skills. Still, it's important because I know some developers who learned technology 20 years ago and they think job for them will be forever when come React and Angular immediately like most of them uh, in panic started learning JavaScript to, to get new jobs. It happens like that, but it's about everything. Job in JavaScript will not be forever. It can be for next few years, but still always you need to be in the looking mode. Like you need to know what's going on on the marketplace, you need to know what skills you need and definitely if you for example are a person that is maybe not the best with I would say TypeScript, you need to know what should you improve to have this TypeScript on the good level, to, to work with your colleagues on the same level. If you are bad with uh, people skills you need to improve that. It's really important to know and work on yourself. Imagine if you are always like that talking with people, or maybe like that. They can feel you are not really self-confident, or maybe if you are in close pose, they can feel you don't like them, or you are closed for, for a relationship with them. Even if you are not, your body language can do that. It's the same with hands. If you will hide your hands, in people's brain can be immediately some thought like maybe you would like to hide something. Body language is something that is super important and only 7% is what you told. The 38% is how you told about your voice and the 55% is your body language, so like facial expressions and how you've been received. Actually, about body language is a huge topic and there is a lot of things that can be told. I think we will create a separate article about that, about some basics about body language. But And definitely, if you are even working in IT, you should take a look on the basics to at least verify if your body is not doing any horrible signs that can kick your relationship with the people. About improving people skills, actually, if you would like to learn coding, of course, if you would like to learn something like design patterns, it's good to take books, but if you would like to learn Angular 10, it's maybe no sense to buying books. It's better to do an online course that you can buy for a few dollars or find any documentation because that knowledge will be super fast outdated. If you would like to learn video, probably it's good to watch an video course because there you can see like all of the movements, all of the scenes and composition. But if you are learning about soft skills, I would say 
The knowledge is not outdated so fast, so it's really good to find books. I really like books about not only about that, but about some basics of marketing, for example. I like books because there is kind of cool knowledge, of course, the like newest, modern, the ways of managing social media probably will not find in books or they will be updated, but outdated, but still you can find a lot of knowledge about the body language, about the soft skills, about the people skills, I would suggest to go with books because there is tons of the money, you will not burn money on the courses from the masters of everything that would like to just sell you that. If somebody put it like book 10 years ago, probably this book still will be good. For example, some people like Del Del Carnegie, probably they will not be never updated. So. I, I would suggest you to, to go with books and uh, I will link for you in the description five books that I think you can take a look as the as the basics to, to know much better about people's skills and one is the book about handling the difficult people I would say sometimes they are around you and it's kind of easy to, to handle difficult people it's not that difficult as we think <laughs> so that's all for today. I'm really glad you survived with me because it was super long video. When I was writing article, it was super long too. It was the longest in my life, what, uh, what I had written in one episode. And thank you for watching that. I hope you've got a lot of knowledge and I hope if ever of the developer will have good people skill. If we will have good people skills, our cooperation will be much nicer. We will have much better mood and we will build fantastic things together. So again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give a thumb up, subscribe our channel, visit us on Duomly on Instagram, you will see what we built for you and see you in the next video. Bye!